Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on the Cisco Unify Wireless Networking Solution. This is a sixth video about EAP TLS, EAP PEEP configuration on the controller, the client, and the ACS infrastructure. In this video, we are going to configure EAP TLS on the controller. In the previous video, we were configuring EAP TLS with the ACS certificate. Um, and as you remember, um, the ACS was playing the role of the authentication server, so it was needing a certificate and was also needing to trust the certification authority. Here we are going to bring everything back to the controller, so we want the controller to be the controller and the authentication server. So we want the controller to have a certificate, and we want the certificate to be signed by the certification authority. The bad news is that the uh, controller does not support the Windows certificate format. So you need to have a sort of third-party tool uh, that will, you will use to generate the certificate signing request, uh, send this request to the certification authority, then of course you'll download the uh, certificate, uh, signed certificate from the certification authority, and you'll use this third-party tool to change the certificate format into a format which is PEM that the controller will understand. So it looks a bit scary because you'll do actually things for the controller on another box using another tool and it's only at the end when we'll have everything ready that is to say a certificate in the controller format, accepted format, that will download the certificate to the controller. The good news is that there is a good paper on Cisco website telling you how to do that. So if you go to Cisco documentation and you go configure technology and you go down to wireless mobility and you go to WLANs and you go to all wireless LANs and you go to example and take notes, if you go down to the security section, uh, there is somewhere here generate CSR for third-party certificate and download and chain uh, certificate to the WC. So this document contains pretty much all you need. So we'll be uh, using some of the commands here. Um, so depending on what kind of certification authority you'll be using, you may not use everything here, but if you are in the worst case scenario, that is to say using Windows certification authority without any pre-configuration and controller and nothing prepared, then you'll need to run through all these steps. The third party tool we are going to use is actually OpenSSL, so there is an implementation for Windows and here be careful, there are several versions of SSL for Windows, some of which have some bugs or non-working features for what we are trying to do. I tried the SSL um, 8H1 which is a very commonly found version and this one does not work. The one you want to use is the 098K version uh, which is working fine. So that's the one K that we I'll be using. So you just install it on your PC and then you're ready to go. Once you have OpenSSL ready, uh, you can open a command prompt and go to the folder where OpenSSL is installed. So in my case it is OpenSSL and here if you see there is a folder which is called bin and you want to go to bin folder, so the bin and that's where OpenSSL program is. So you can launch the OpenSSL program or use the OpenSSL space with the options. The easier way is just to launch the OpenSSL uh, program and then you get a different prompt which is OpenSSL. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here is to generate, again that's on behalf of the controller, you want to generate a certificate signing request. So that's going to be generating a certificate pair, private private and public key, and you'll ask the uh, certificate authority to sign this public key. So to do that you'll be generating a pair and requesting a signing key. And the command to do that is this very long command you see here, which is pretty much the same structure as the one you see in the background in the uh, Cisco website. So you request new key, uh, key length is 1024 max, and the key out is so to say the your key is going to be october.pem, and the signing request is going to be the please sign.pem. As soon as you do that, there are a few things that you need to fill up, a few information. Again, I'm skipping the uh, time when I'm filling up this information so that you don't waste too much time. Like here, so you define a, uh, a few things to get on a certificate and very important is the password. You want to define a, a password. Then you press enter and that generates the key and the certificate re signing request. Once this is ready, the certificate signing request is ready. So you just need to go to the folder where you have OpenSSL and you were running the program form. Uh, if I go here it's bin and in there I should find the please sign yeah, please sign PEM. So that's my certificate signing request. If I open it with anything like Notepad, it's exactly the same certificate signing request as the one we're using on the ICS. So the process to have it authenticated and validated on the CA is pretty much the same. You copy this value 
and you go to your certification authority using the administrator account and you follow the same process as for the uh, ACS before. You say request a certificate, it's an advanced certificate request and it's uh, the base 64 encode and you paste this signing request. Template is still web server, you say submit and you get a certificate ready. You can now download a certificate and save it somewhere. So notice that you are saving here the certificate on this machine. Again, it's on behalf of the controller, so nothing is on the controller yet. Let me call it uh, October 2. All right, next step, I'm going to take this certificate, uh, October 2, copy it and put it in the OpenSSL folder, which is where I'm running all my commands from. So I want the certificate to be there too. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the next step um, is to merge this signed certificate uh, with the private key that we generated before. Because we had a public and private key, we send the public key for signature and we want to merge this public key back with the private key so that they make one group working together. So that's still an OpenSSL command, which is that long command uh, by which I'm basically asking to merge October certificates coming from the CA into my October PEM key uh, to generate at the end what is called final cert.p12 um, with again passwords here that uh, you want to remain the same just for simplicity. Um, so this is again if you go down somewhere in these documents here. So if you go down, you'll find this command. All right, fair enough. That's my command. I'm doing this and it doesn't work. And why? Because the certificate that we download from the CA has to have a specific format. You have to use the base64 encode instead of the DER default Windows certificate uh, format. So you download that one again. I'm going to save it with the name October 3, copy and paste into bin folder. And if I go back to my commands and change it to October 3 this time, it should work. Here we go. So at this point, we have a signed certificate. Uh, from the CA. Uh, the last thing we need to do is to convert this final cert.p12, which is again a, a specific format, into the default format that the controller is going to take, which is a .pem format. And there is again an OpenSSL command for that, which is this long command by which I'm inputting the final cert.p12 and I'm um, generating my wlc.pem certificate. So I'm just changing the format of my certificate. Okay, done. So at this point, I have my uh, my WLC.pem, which is the certificate that I'm going to use for the controller. So I will, I will be downloading this certificate to the controller, and this controller will have in this certificate actually a pair of public and private keys. The public key is signed by the certification authority, so the controller is going to be able to send this key out to clients. And of course, um, this key is being signed by the CA, so the client is going to be able to trust this key. 